Welcome to Young and Adulting, a podcast of the Young Adults community at Christ Fellowship Church. Our hope is to create a safe place for authentic conversation around the ins and outs of life as we all try to navigate following Jesus in the world we live in today. Thanks for joining us and welcome to the conversation. Welcome back to another episode of the Young and Adulting Podcast. My name is Tyler. I'm going to be your host for today. We are in season four of the podcast, and we're asking the question, why? Now, if you'll refer to season three, it was all about asking the how question, but we're talking about the why, the important questions we have. And and our hope really is that this season of the podcast will give you confidence in your daily walk with Jesus, knowing what God's word says, why he says it. And we're really believing that knowing and understanding the why behind some of life's biggest questions can help us get through any of the how stuff that life throws our way. So today, I'm excited about it because we are recording live at Christ Fellowship Conference with one of the most amazing people on the planet, special guest speaker, Pastor Earl McClellan. Pastor Earl is the founder and lead pastor of Shoreline City Church, a dynamic communicator of the gospel, passionate about developing leaders and people, <laughs> father of three, husband. You're crushing this yes, right now. Uh, You're crushing God. this. And yeah, you've been married over 20 years. You yes. host a podcast with you. I mean, I could go on and on, but we're excited that Please you joined the conversation Please today. Don't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, but before we jump into the subject today, and really this episode is answering the why question, why are relationships so hard? Oh, goodness. Before we get there, oh, boy. before okay. we get there, I know you got stuff to say, and I got lots of stuff to listen to. <laughs> uh, what do the people need to know about you? Fun facts. The floor Ooh, is yours. The, honestly, the best thing about me is my wife is so fine. Okay, so I call her my sexy piece of dark chocolate. Okay. Bring, I'll bring I'll bring her on right now if you want me to. to okay, I mean, you want me to, honey? Okay, she's over here in the yeah. back. That's your call, man. <laughs> uh, honey, you sure? sure. You look she's good. Sure. So she, that's the best yeah. thing about me. I uh, love her so much. We've been married yeah. 25 years now. It's gone by so fast, and it's been an absolute blast. Then uh, what, something else that's fun. I love my kids, yep. for sure, and I still love playing basketball. Okay. My, my, I have an 18-year-old. We have an 18-year-old, and he and I, we ran the court the Come other on. day. It was so much fun, not because I'm that good, but I was riding on his coattails and another guy on the team. So it was a... Absolute blast. What else is fun about me? I've been shaving my head before Michael Jordan shaved his head. Okay, so I'm bald under here, but I did not do this because of Michael Jordan. I did this because I was a little bit crazy, and my boy was like, hey, want to go bald? I'm like, let's do this. Did he he help? Yeah, man, he shaved my head for me, okay, Okay. which is... Kind of took our relationship to another level. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so awesome. yeah, I did that. I mean, a thousand years ago now, and but no, th- those are those are the fun things about me. Three great kids that we love a ton. We're having a blast, loving life, Come and on. I'm excited to talk about relationships, man. Yeah. Well, you're still hooping. Uh, how are your knees? Because I'm about to turn thirty, and my knee is like bad. Literally, I was walking uh, down some steps today. Today, and my knees were like, stop walking. Yeah. And I said, yeah. you know what? That's real. I'm going to drive these things to the ground. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to go until I can't go anymore. So matter of fact, last year I had this crazy injury. I was playing in a men's league that I'm probably too old to be in, but I still no, love man. playing. No. And I got this random injury, man. A guy hit me in my face and my whole left cheek was numb. For six months, I wasn't able to play for a while. Got to pay to play a little bit, Man, you know, a little bit. It was it was crazy and wild, but I'm back out there. Come the on. old guy doing the sky hook shot, you know. Now LeBron James just beat you know Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's record, yeah, yeah. so I, I'm still doing the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar hook Come shot. On. Come on, and loving it. Well, that's good stuff. I love your hat, by the way. Thank you. My wife uh, picked it out. C- Man, there's a reason you've been married five times longer than me. Uh, I need to take some tips on that, which is great. We're talking about this question, why. I think uh, the question, why are relationships so hard, is yeah. so real, specifically as we talk about young adults, 18 to 25. Yep. Even really, I'm about to turn 30 in a couple months. People in that space are still going like, yeah. why are things so difficult? Yeah. Why is stuff so challenging? And, and really, a lot of uh, young adults take their cues from culture. And so I know you have sure. a lot of thoughts on that to share. And so uh, you've been married 25 years. Yeah. Uh, relationships are something you're clearly good at. And so oh, we would you're love... you're kind to say No, that. no, I, I believe that. So would you maybe just take a few moments, tell us your story, how you met, maybe the process of, uh, yeah... Marrying your Ooh, wife, all that good fun. stuff. That's because, fun. Because, you know, you're passionate about it. You help people mm-hmm. get better at relationships, which is something we all need to do. Yeah. But snapshot your marriage, your journey, how you got passionate. Okay. So 
like I said, my wife is so fine, right? So I'm walking down to basketball practice. How old? How old? uh, I'm at this point in time, second semester. I'm 18 years old. Second semester of my freshman year of college. I'm walking down to basketball practice. And our school was a smaller school. It was only about 5,000 students. It was a small D1 school, right? So I'm I'm walking down to basketball practice. And this girl is walking towards me. She's a... I've never seen anybody this beautiful, all right? So she's got her hair permed, all right? So if you don't know what that, oh, she's black. So her hair perm means it's straight, right? So her hair okay. is straightened. doesn't have to be permed, but she chose to perm. Straight hair, lipstick, little jean jacket on. You remember. I remember. I remember like it was yesterday. It was a yeah. cloudy day uh, outside. I'm walking down. I, I look at her and I'm like, just give her the little nod. You're yeah, like, yeah. you know, what's up? Yeah. Uh, not too aggressive because I don't want her, you know, to think that guy's weird. But I also wanted her to know I, I noticed her. I said, what's up? She smiled. I go down to basketball practice and I tell my boys, I'm like, there's a goddess on campus. I've never seen a girl this fine in my entire life. Um, fast forward, we, um, we end up connecting because everybody who I was friends with, she ended up moving onto their floor at at school. So they're all like, oh my gosh, you got to meet Earl. You got to meet Earl. And then they're telling me, you've got to meet Onika. You've got to meet Onika. Now, initially we thought because we were both black, right? So they're just trying to put us together because they're like, hey, you're black, you're black. You got to be together. Uh, but but come to find out, it was God. It was God. It was look like, at God. Look, he's working. <laughs> I still remember the first time we sat down together at, this is random now, oh, we sat down it. together at the cafeteria, and she was eating, and she would eat with her hand in front of her mouth. So anybody who's listening to this right now, just, you know, Matt, I just covered my mouth. That's why you can't hear me that well. So she's talking like this, okay? Like it's kind of muffled. And I'm like, why is she doing this? But she was just so etiquette. She didn't want me to even see any food in her mouth. That's how wonderful this young woman was. And it still is. So fast forward, we dated way too long. We dated two and a half years. Uh, I do not recommend that. Um, because we were trying not to have sex before marriage, yeah. which I know sounds crazy. Maybe we're jumping into difficult no. things already. No, what's going sounds on? wild. Sounds like wait, archaic. Wait, how will you know if everything works properly? If you don't, you know, try before you buy, if you will. Uh, don't worry, everything's gonna work just fine. Yeah. You know, but we were trying to really honor God. Uh, you had made poor poor choices in the past, so you want to kind of do it right yep. in this relationship. Want to honor God, honor each other. And um, so we dated those two and a half years. I can go into a lot more details. I, I won't at this point in time. But one day I did ask her to marry me. She didn't cry. I wanted her to cry because the thing is she doesn't cry as much as I want her to, you know, with the yeah. beautiful things that I do for her. Yeah. So, honey, can we please start the tears? I, I will go through. I mean, it's not even even about honoring her anymore. Are you a crier? I cry. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you ask me a question right now, give me some, ask me something uh, deep. You, you love your children. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll be getting yeah. to weep uncontrollably, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so I, I, I cry maybe too fast. Okay. So we've got the great balance going here because Onika's just, she's stone cold. Okay. She, her, I don't know. Hey. There might be something in her soul. No, no, she's perfect. Honestly, she just doesn't cry that much. So anytime I'm even trying to do something special for her, it's not even about making her feel special. Now I'm just trying to get her to cry. Yeah, yeah. So if her eyes fill up with tears, Tyler, I feel good. You want? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did I it. Get that. I get mm-hmm. that. So I asked her to marry me at uh, the Polo Grill little restaurant. I didn't even have a suit, borrowed a suit from one of my teammates. I didn't have a car, borrowed a car from one of my teammates and went down there and had when a man loves a woman playing on the piano, asked her to marry me. I didn't play it. (laughs) I paid the guy $7. Yeah, he played it. And, uh, and here we are all these years later. That's awesome. Love and life. What a great $7. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I mean, honestly, this $7 has lasted me a lot of yeah. years, man. It's been fantastic. That's amazing. Well, when you look back at your journey, you know, uh, speaking to a young adult audience who's trying to figure this out, mm-hmm. on why are relationships so difficult? Why are they so hard? Uh, when you look back on your journey, like when did you become passionate about helping people in this area of relationships? Sheesh, was man. it? I mean, I'm sure it wasn't like a overnight. You know, you were 26, and but yeah. you know, there's some things I'm sure that you've learned along the way. That you know, shaped that. Uh, I don't know if there was ever a point in time I was like, hey, I, I necessarily want to help people with relationships. But you know, 
it's it's the currency of life. Everybody yep. is in some type of relationship, yep. whether it's dating, engaged, married, or you've got your boss, you've got your coworkers, yep. you've got your teammates. Shoot, you got your family, yep. and there's a lot of drama that can come with that sometimes. So you ask the questions: Why are relationships so hard? Really because of us, right? Yep. All of us, because all of us are complicated and difficult and have issues and have uh, paradigms and the way we see the world and perspectives. Yep. And with all of that, we bring that into every relationship because you bring your whole self. Like yep. when you come to work, that person probably isn't as mean and nasty as you think they are mm -hmm. at work. They just have gone through so much junk and trauma in their yeah. life and have I don't yet have the emotional maturity yeah. to understand how to navigate dealing with somebody that upsets them. It's like, wait, I, it was just your coffee. It was just, you know, I just moved your lunch in the, you know, yeah. the refrigerator. Why are you freaking out like this? Uh, but they just haven't, you know, worked some of those other muscles. So for all of us, man, I feel like if we don't take the time like you're doing to talk about why are they so hard? How can we get better? How can we create some kind of ease? We, we end up, I, I think, hating a lot of life when we really can enjoy yeah. a lot of life. Things are difficult. Don't get me wrong. You got to work through things because yeah. kids come in and you got to work through something else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I actually thought I was really, really patient and really, really kind. Then I got married yeah, and right, I realized, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. man, I'm not as patient as I totally. thought I was. Uh, because when you're single and it's like you're in your house or in your apartment, right. you can do what you want to do. When, when you want to do, do it. it, eat what you want to eat, go where you want to go. Yep. And you're like, man, I'm well adjusted. Yeah. I'm ready for a relationship. And then God brings you someone and they've got their own flow right. and they got yeah. what they want to do when they want to do it. And you're yeah. like, oh, well, why aren't we doing my thing? Totally. Uh, in our marriage, we had our first year was not hard at all. People are like, oh, your first year of marriage is so difficult. Ours was not. Second year of marriage, not hard at all. Third year of marriage for us was difficult. Mm. Uh, and not difficult where we're like, you know, throwing things at each other. We actually don't, you know, don't yell or throw things. Um, but Onika says that's when I got an opinion. And that's oh, what made things <laughs> difficult in our relationship. Because up until that point in time, she was like, where do you want to eat? And I'm like, I don't care, wherever yeah, you yeah. want to go. And it, we were just were doing whatever she wanted to do. Yeah. And year three, I'm like, wait, I don't yeah. think I like this. I know what I want. Yeah. I, I want I want barbecue. Yeah, yeah. hot wings tonight. <laughs> That's right. And she's That's like, I don't I don't do barbecue. I, don't do barbecue. I, I do I do broccoli. <laughs> and I'm like, what's broccoli? I'm broccoli? done with broccoli. <laughs> you know, uh, I remember one time we were in the backyard because I still like playing sports, even you know back then and up until now. Come on, so I hadn't played sports for a while. I'm like, hey, honey. You want to throw the football with me in the backyard? <laughs> and I grabbed the football. And my wife, again, she's gifted, talented, a leader of leaders. Yeah. Okay. Sports is not her vein, but she can do everything else. So we're in the backyard. I throw the first pass. Her hands are up. Ball goes right through her hands. Busts her in the mouth. Oh, man. Her lip gets big. And now I look like an abusive husband. You know, this is not good at all. I'm like, honey, no longer will we ever have to play, you know, sports. But here, here I am like, hey, can we, can we yeah, do right, my right. stuff? Can we do my stuff? Can we do my stuff? Can we do my stuff? And she was kind and accommodating, but it definitely created some tension yep. because now she's needing to die to her flesh. And then I got to make sure I'm not trying to do things out of pride and out of ego and out of selfishness. Yep. Uh, so we, it was just another dance. Then when we launched the church together and she and I, we do it together, right. like we parent together, yep. you know, um, where we, we started it, where now we're working together. And I'm like, I wanna go this way. She wants to go another way. So we start stepping on each other's toes. And so I say all that to say, there's a ton of, uh, of selfishness, of pride, of ego, of insecurity that I had to deal with um, that you know God was using my wife yep. and our opportunities to grow and develop to shape me and mold me and change me into who he wanted me to be. And I'm a long way from being where I want to be, but I'm thankful for her kindness and her grace over Amen. the years because she's definitely helped me uh, become a better man. Amen. That's amazing. And I think what's so incredible about that is you're talking about relationships are complicated, but we have this opportunity to get better. And as a pastor, right, you're pastoring people who are in relationship with one another, in relationship with you, yeah, and yep. are complicated. 
and people are, are working things out all of the time. And I think what, one of the things we're up against, even in 2023, um, Pastor Todd was just talking about it, is the, the cultural language and oh, narrative yeah. that so many uh, mm-hmm. young adults, young people in general, are falling prey to the narrative yep. or to the mindsets or to the language or to the con- con- concepts mm-hmm. of what love is mm-hmm. and what relationships should be like, or even what sex is. I mean, all, you could yep, go down the for list. Sure. And that is the predominant uh, voice in a lot of young people's mm-hmm. life of this is the cultural norm expectation you watch something on netflix and then you go in a relationship and you think like wait things don't go this way yeah and so if you want to speak maybe to uh to to that for a few minutes because i know that you've done some Mm -hmm. uh some talks with with the church on some cultural lies that we believe right what are the lies that that people are believing yeah and then what what is the truth to combat it you know you even mentioned it earlier like you got to try it out before you know like some of that stuff i heard that in like seventh grade the first time like yeah i mean Literally, these are things that, you know, back in 2007, I was hearing kids nowadays are hearing much earlier. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So Third what, grade, fourth grade, yeah, so fifth let's, grade. Let's talk yeah, about that. Man. Let's talk about some of the cultural lies that are commonplace and common narrative, um, maybe in the relationships you see uh, in your church and just uh, today at large and what the truth is to combat them. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go probably too deep initially. Please. I'm just, I'm just saying that to those who are listening right now. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming a lot of you love Jesus. If you don't, you're on the journey. We're glad you're here. Glad you're listening to this. Um, First and foremost, you don't belong to you. And this, this is hard for us to get. Yep. Because we think I belong to me. Yep. My desires, my will, what do I want? When do I want it? I mean, my kids are going to grow up in a day where they probably never have to go to a grocery store. Ever, yeah, that's you true. know, for the re- ever. If yeah. they don't want to, they probably won't ever have to go. Everything will be sent to them. I, I grew up going to the store, yep. but they're going to go up on a day. It's like, no, I don't want that. Yep. I want this other thing. Oh, they didn't bring me the right thing. I'm going to order something else. Yep. And it's just going to be brought to me whenever I want it brought to me. It's not a bad thing. Shoot, I love Amazon Prime. You know, I'm a Prime member. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you start treating all your relationships like that, you start treating your life like that, like everything's just going to be brought to me, then you'll never have all that you're supposed to have in this life. Because there are a lot of things that God wants you to learn to fight for. Yep. Uh, I am, my wife and I like to work out together. Uh, it's so much fun. And, you know, whether it's, you know, squats or, you know, bench press, she benches more than me too. She's so strong. Uh, so we're out. No, not yeah, really. Yeah, uh, <laughs> she could if she wanted yeah, to, though. That's how amazing she is. Um, but we like, you know, like going out, you know, working out together. It's yep. the resistance that makes you stronger. That's you, a word. You, you have to, you have to have that. If we don't have any resistance at all and, and my wife and I, Onika, when she's over there, she knows this. Sometimes she's like, mm, that's a little too much weight for me. You know, <laughs> let me, let me go down. And I'm like, okay, no problem. You can handle that. But if you actually want to grow, you're going to have to have some more weight Mm -hmm. that's going to need to be put on you. And for a lot of us, we're not understanding. You actually have to have that weight that's put on you. I'm not saying you need to pray for drama. You need to pray for difficulty. It comes because life is crazy all by itself, but don't try to run from all of that. Just thinking, well, I didn't order this. I didn't order that. I don't want that coming to my door. Hey, deal with what comes to your door. The family that you were raised in, I know things may not be perfect. Your father may have left your mom. Your mom may have left your dad. Uh, maybe your siblings hated you. You know, you got all this stuff that you cannot stand. Fight. Yeah. Keep on pushing through that. It's making you stronger. That's the stuff right there that helps you become the man or the woman that you're destined to be. But as long as we keep thinking everything's supposed to be easy, everything's supposed to be on my time, everything's supposed to be the way I want it, it ends up messing you up because when you get in a relationship, we're trying to grow here. We're trying to be refined. We're trying to um, uh, um, mature. And you only get that with some of that that conflict, difficulty, hard times, pressures that, yeah. that can come our way. Well, so that's one thing. And again, I, I know I maybe went a little too no, l- deep, little too deep on, on that one, but I just think that's necessary for someone to know your relationship might not be working out, not because the other person's so bad. It's maybe because you think the other person is there for you. Yep. 
And you you got to understand that that God will bring you someone not just for you, but for you to serve them. Right. And That's and and as he as he opens your eyes to oh. I'm here to lay down my life. Oh, I'm here to serve. Oh, I'm here to die to myself. That is, that's just, I don't know, it's really, really eye-opening and will push you forward. Another lie um, that I think, um, I'm not going to say this is a lie. I'm going to say this is a distortion. Okay. Um, therapy. I love and am for therapy. I pause right there. People are like, wait, what? Yeah, I'm yeah. a therapist. Love counseling. Love counselors, love therapists. I go myself, right? Celebrate it, one thousand percent. I think we too many times are interested in going places that'll just tell us what we want to hear and not what we need to hear. Yep. So now it kind of can be cool to say, "Oh, my therapist." But I'm wondering, okay, are they challenging you to grow at all? Mm -hmm. Now I'm a big proponent for. A Christian, you know, therapist, yeah. you know, somebody that's grounded in the faith. I don't think you have to go to a therapist like that at all. I don't, I'm not saying you have to, but just make sure the people that are speaking into your life are pointing you the way of truth and life. And we believe that's a person and his yeah. name is Jesus. Because yeah. if not, you'll take a whole bunch of cultural norms and you'll just begin to think, oh, I, my counselor said as if right. that's the Bible. Right. And it's like, hey, I, I want you to go to counseling. I want you to be healthy. I want you to make, I want to make, pay that money. Yeah, go ahead and do it. If your company pays for that, go do that. That'll be healthy for you. Help you get become a better parent or, or a spouse or what have you in the future. But at the end of the day, understand that you need to have someone in your life that is, is placing a demand that's on the inside of you. Yep. That's not letting you just exist, but is trying to take you a place where you can become all that God has called you to be. That's great. Is that too much? No, it's great. Okay. Honestly, segues into the next thought, which really like our culture today and really young people view sexual purity as antiquated, yeah. outdated, yeah, archaic. Uh -huh. archaic. I mean, it's, it's, it, even when I was in the seventh grade, I had friends laughing at me at the concept of like waiting for marriage. No, yep. 2007. I mean, we were yep. 2023. Mm -hmm. So to speak to maybe the young adult who subscribes to that narrative of like, yo, know, like purity, staining from sex, those things are antiquated, outdated. What's the point? Yeah. You know, maybe just speak to that subject because you're talking about who's the people that are going to press you and yeah, hold you yeah. accountable and tell you what you need to hear versus what you want to hear. We have a whole generation of people who are seeking out relationships and reinforcing their own narratives. For sure. Right? Yep. So, mm -hmm. you know, Man, this is a big topic. This I don't is a big know one. if we always talk about. Yeah, for sure. It's a big one. First, you know, no guilt or shame, you know, for anybody who is listening. Yep. We're, we're not interested in trying to tear you down. Don't want you to feel like you're less than. 100%. You know, sometimes, you know, you just end up, you have some standards, and then you make a mistake, you slip up, and... Um, and maybe you end up kind of running from the place where you actually need to be healed. So, uh, and that's what shame does to us. Yep. Shame usually, and, and fear makes us run from the very place where God wants to heal us. So if you're even listening to this, just so you know, we love you. We're yep. for you. We're in your corner. You can have a fresh start. Uh, you can have a brand new beginning. It can be today. Um, so I would want you to, want you to hear that. Uh, with that being said, there is, without a doubt, I mean, sex isn't going anywhere. God made it first and foremost, yeah. okay? So thank you, Lord, that he did this. It was his idea. So culture is trying to something that God made. Yeah. That's first and foremost. God did this. And when he was, when he, in the book of Genesis, Genesis 1, chapter 2, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. He told man and woman, be fruitful, multiply. Mm -hmm. He's the one that set our bodies up the way that they are. So sex is not an evil. It is not a bad thing. It is a God-designed gift mm -hmm. that has been given to humanity. So let's first and foremost make sure we get that picture. Now what the world tries to do is said, hey, use this gift that God has given you. I want to pervert it. And I want you to now use this gift to, as, a, as a means to get your needs met. Yeah. 
But when we look at the life of Jesus, we know Jesus came to lay down his life for others, not to take from other people. Yep. But that is what sex continues to do is tries to take, tries to take, tries to take. Then it tries to trick you into thinking that you're closer to a person than you actually are. Wow. It'll make you think we're bonded. It'll make you think we're connected. It'll make you think we got a deep relationship. You don't have a deep relationship. You got maybe good sex, but it's 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 uh, coming at the at the expense of emotional connection, spiritual connection. So it, what I, what we ask people to do, what we encourage people to do, is say, hey, take this piece of your life, this sex piece, as a dating couple or whomever. Put, let's put that to the side. Yeah. All right. Let, let's put that over here, and we know as we grow closer emotionally, as we grow closer spiritually, it's only natural that you're going to want to get closer sexually. Yep. That's the way God actually designed it, okay? He designed it that way. But he said, hey, I want to put this sex thing in the context of marriage. And the reason I want to do that is it's such a powerful force. And if you take this gift and you begin to distort and manipulate it, it has such force, yeah. this thing can actually take you, can actually push you over, almost like a wave that will come with a rip current that can pull That's you a direction that you don't want to go. So what I want to do is I want to put it in the context of something that has the strength to be able to contain all of that power. But if you do it outside of that, if you take sex and you, and you, you begin to enjoy it, quote unquote, outside of the context of marriage, it pulls you directions emotionally. It pulls you directions spiritually. It pulls you directions mentally. I ask, are we, are we better off mentally and emotionally with everybody sleeping around? It, are we better? It's a great question to ask. Yeah. Are, I, it doesn't look like it to me. Yeah. It doesn't look like our relationships are flourishing. I'm telling you, you can have, the person can be the finest person you've ever met. Body banging. I mean, on all, I mean, just like, whoa, oh my, look at that guy. Look at that girl. It's the, anybody can become ugly after a while. If you don't have a connection that goes beyond the physical, your relationship will be shallow, mm -hmm. hands down. So what we want to do, we want to encourage people, hey, let's get some depth to our relationship here. Let's, who are you? Where are you from? What have you walked through? What are your prayer requests? How do you connect with God? When you read the Bible, what are you hearing? Those are the types of things that begin to push you forward. I know I'm being maybe a little bit all over the place here, but I get really passionate you know, about it. this because so many of us are, are buying into this lie that you know you got to have sex as your foundation. You don't need sex as your foundation for a healthy m marriage or relationship. You need God that's as the a foundation for a healthy marriage or relationship. Yep. That that's what will help. You need serving. Yep. You need sacrifice. Um we were talking a little bit even this past Sunday, you know, about it. Our oldest is about to go to college and Come can't on, believe it. It's go. wild. I don't know how it happened. Uh, my wife looks like she's still in college. That's how beautiful and young young she looks. But he's about to go to college. Man. It's crazy out there. Everybody always says don't blink. So I, I'm like, I keep my eyes like Yeah, try like, to keep them open, well. man, because it happens so fast. But he's going to go. And he's going to be able to have access to whatever he wants right. to have access to. Yep. So, you know, as parents, we do try to give him a level of freedom now while he's in our home. Because sure. if he's going to make any mistakes, I want him to make them while right. he's with us yep. rather than, you know, he gets out there. He doesn't know totally. how to handle himself at a party, doesn't know how to handle totally. himself. If somebody asks him, hey, you want to do this? You want to try this? So we try to create some space for him uh, to, to, you know, learn some of those things now. We're praying. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen, right? right? But believing that he's going to stay, stay the course but when he gets out there, he can do whatever he wants to do. And some people that do whatever they want to do, they think that's freedom. Well, I don't think they're free. Yeah. And the reason I don't think they're free is I would say, if you're so free, then stop. Stop. Yep. Stop sleeping around. Stop pornography. Yeah. Stop DMing everybody. Just stop. Yeah. You're, if you're so free, just stop you'll find out really quick that you're actually a slave to your flesh, yep. a slave to your lust, slave to your desires, 
Again, no shame on anyone. It's just we're we're hearing this lie that this is freedom. This is freedom. This is life. This is life. Like, no, 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 my friends. I'm telling you, life is found in surrender. Life yeah. is found in sacrifice. Life is found in you saying, not my will, but your will be done, God. And it's a stretch. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm yeah. not saying everything is perfect. I'm not saying it's unicorns and Skittles every place. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying there is freedom for found in a place where you and I are not slaves to every single thing we want to do, where we have an authority in our life where we say, God, I want my life to reflect your life, your will, your way, your purpose, not just what I want whenever I want it. So again, I'm all over the place here, man. No, that's great. I mean, I think you're casting vision. I think a big responsibility we have is to cast vision for the, the beauty of relationships, the way they were intended by God. And I think a lot of us, even growing up, I think that the church at large, the narrative that a lot of young people heard, you know, even 10, 15 years ago is, is sex is bad, don't do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and purity became this like church cuss word that like you don't want to hear, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. uncomfortable. And yeah. I think that we have this opportunity to recast a, a, a persuasive, better option for what that is and what life looks like. You yeah, know? Tyler, can I say this too? Um, there are so many um, people and, and I, I, I battled pornography. You know, I had this as a part of my life for too long. Thankfully, by God's grace, yeah. it's been, you know, 25 years since I've looked at porn. It's, uh, it's a miracle. But that was not the case, you know, as I'm a teenager, college student, you know, even into the very first year of my marriage. So I, I know the, the, the cycle yeah. and the, um, the chain that that is, the addiction that that is. Um, but I also know what it's like to be free. Come you know, I, I know I know what it's like to be free. Yeah. And freedom is a whole lot better. Yeah. But when when you're dating someone and uh, you think, all right, I want to, uh, you know, we're, we're getting close. Let's just go ahead. Let, let, let's just let's have sex. Let's just do it. I, I think we end up and we don't know this. We think we're strengthening the relationship. But I think in the long haul, we're actually hurting the relationship. Mm. Because when you get married, you don't get to have sex every moment of every day with your spouse. You have to learn how to say no to your flesh, no to yourself. When you're on a business trip and nobody's around, If you have not learned when you're dating how to say That's no, great point, Pastor. then how are you going to no, be able to say no when you're on that business trip? Yep. What happens in that dating time and even the beginning stages when you're a single person is you're working these muscles that will help you have the longevity you want to have Come later. But if you don't work those muscles I'm just telling you, it'll be somebody else to have sex with. There'll be somebody else to flirt with. There'll be somebody else who's going to be interested in you. Your wife or husband is going to be working a lot or somebody let themselves go a little bit. And now somebody else is showing you a little bit of attention. And now since you have this insecurity, you haven't learned how to have any self-discipline, haven't allowed the grace of God to change you and transform you from the inside out. Now you're thirsty. And the first time somebody shows you some attention at the gym or at work, you're like, oh, yeah, I need more of that. I need more of that. I need more of that. Well, you, you, you haven't been working the muscles yeah, the great. muscles that need to be worked so that's this is another positive to say hey let me not do whatever i want to do whenever i want to do it right. so that i'm not just a flash in the pan yeah. i want to have a marriage that's like i've been married 83 years right and i got no teeth i'm throwing in my dentures and still giving my wife a kiss and yeah. i got my grandkids and my great grandkids oh, sitting around see. they're like wow i, I want to be like that that, that that's, that's what i'm looking for i'm not just looking for a good friday night. Yeah. I want a great life. I, yeah. I, I want a, a life that not only honors God, but honors my wife and honors my kids and honors the people that God has given me to serve. So it goes beyond just what do I need? I'm living my life for something bigger and Come grander. On. That's so great. So look, I don't mean to preach here. I'm just, no, I'm really do. excited. Please do. Stirring me. Stirring me up. I love that. So we, we get it. Relationships are complicated. Uh, you know, you got an 18 year old, you got a 30 year old, both in relationships, maybe different kind of relationships, mm-hmm. but are still saying, why are they so difficult? Why are relationships so hard? 
we've all done this. We, we go on Google and we type in a question that maybe we want to ask somebody, but we're like, they'll judge me if I ask them. So I'm going to throw on Google, see what Google has to say. That's, that's real. Like, it is. And it's, you know, like, what's the, you know, whatever, trivia, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But it's real with this kind of stuff. Um, so a, a young adult goes on Google and they type in, why are relationships so hard? And you, Pastor Earl, you get to fill the answer that they're going to see in a couple mm. phrases, a couple sentences. What is the response that shows up to them? to that answer. I only got a couple couple sentences. I mean, there. I've seen like a paragraph. Okay. Yeah, that's right. right. I mean, there's sometimes, like, yes, sometimes there's like, right. six, uh, like, you can sh- have, you can autofill like six of the you responses. Can, you, you can, can. Yeah. that's right. right. Show more, you. show more. Yeah, yeah, I got you. <laughs> um, if someone types that in, that tells me they're having some difficulty, right? That things are not going the way that they want it to go. So, if I'm using my Google al- algorithm here, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I've been got my cookies on everything that you've been searching and, you know, you're on Bumble and you're on this site and you're on that site. And then you get to the spot where you're like, why are they so hard? Yep. Um, I would just want you, I, I would put on there, there is hope. That's what I would put. There is hope. I don't know that I'm answering that question. I think I'm answering the deeper question because you're trying to figure out, is this worth it? It's great. Should I even, should I keep on fighting? Um, I'm tired of being alone. Why does this keep happening? That's what I think is really being said. So I would say there is hope. Love it. And then um, if you would keep scrolling, you know, you not, to, not to page four, uh, but keep on scrolling, I would say you, you've got to find some great community yep. to be in. And, you know, I love church. I know churches aren't perfect. Uh, I'm not perfect, but I would just say you, you got to find a place where you can get planned. Even you got to start watching someplace online. Christ Fellowship is a great place. Start watching online. Just get involved in online. Yeah. Do, do, do on. something. Uh, just start somewhere. Begin to get the right inputs into you to get your soul filled up uh, so you're not going out looking for your next relationship on empty. Yep. Get filled up. Get whole. Begin to see yourself the way God sees you. Have some man, some woman, a pastor speaking into your life, sure. reminding you of who you are in Christ, why you were put on this planet, that you're not a piece of junk. You're not supposed to be tossed aside. You shouldn't be somebody's side piece. You're not yeah. leftovers. You don't deserve that. You should not be abused. You should not be disrespected like that. You need someone to remind you who you are of all of these different things. Get so built up so yeah. that when you go back in, you go back in, not just broken and bleeding and defeated, but because you, you'll end up attracting stuff that you don't want to attract yeah. with that, with that type of mindset, go in strong, great. humble, fill with faith, fill with life, not thirsty, yep. not looking for somebody else to complete you, but understanding that you're whole in Christ already. Come on. This works even for marriages too. get, get, get whole. Get strong. It's like things aren't working out right. Hey, you guys can't talk. Just begin. Begin to get filled back up so you don't keep yep. going into those same conversations, broken and beat down. Come on. So then you can have a place of strength that can come from the grace of Almighty God. And then you can see these relationships become what they're supposed to be. It happens overnight, maybe sometimes, <laughs> but most times it's uh, the, the daily decisions that begin to help us move the right directions. Yep. And you know, we don't end up where we wanna end because of intentions. We end up where we wanna end up, we were gonna end up because of direction. So you gotta be pointed the right way, not just wanting to point the right way. Cause that wanting will not get you there. You're gonna have to end up being willing to make those changes. Come on, that's great stuff, so, Pastor Earl. That was, that, that's my Google response. Thanks so much, there is hope. There's hope. I love that. Pastor, you have an incredible podcast voice. I don't know if anyone's ever told you what? that. What? Are you serious? Uh, 100%. This Get is, out of I here. I can't wait to listen to this again. Whoa. Uh, you do too. Oh, thank you. Thank you. 
Well, <laughs> with that, uh, where else can people find more content from you? You know, plug along, oh, get connected man. to the podcast. Okay. Maybe some, well, some my work. wife and I do have a little podcast. I mean, we really did it for our church, but uh, we were finding some other people are jumping in on Come it. On. So it's called With So Much Love, yep. e O. Uh, with so much love, Eno podcast, and we, we're having a lot of fun with it. We're not as consistent with it as we need to be. I don't know how many episodes. How many episodes do we have now, honey? I don't know. 10, 12, something episodes. Uh, so we like to have a lot of fun on there. Uh, but it's been a blast just to be able to talk about a whole from dating to marriage to kids to parents to yep. boundaries to so much stuff. So that could be a fun spot for people to find us. But if you want to find anything good about me, find, go, go see my wife. Go, go to my wife's Instagram page. That's what's fun. She does way more posting uh, than, than I do. It's great. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being with us today. This has been great. Can't wait to listen back and take notes. Well, I get to watch it back the second time. This has been a blessing to our our Young Adults community and to our listeners. So for those of you who've been tuning in, thanks for tuning in. We hope this is super valuable. And if you like this episode, leave us a comment, review, subscribe to the podcast, and don't forget to share it with a friend. You know, you could send a text, but we'll catch you back next time for another episode of the Young Adulting Podcast. We love you. Peace. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Young and Adulting. Follow us on Instagram at cf.youngadults. And if there's a topic you'd like to talk about, we want to hear about it. Send us an email or leave a comment with your thoughts. We'll see you next time.